Hey everybody, this is Chris with Overclockers Club. I've got something really cool here from MSI. This is part of the MPG series from MSI. This is the Z690 Carbon Wi-Fi. It's the latest Z690 chipset. And while I'm waiting for the DDR5 memory and a CPU, We'll be doing this review in two segments. So the first segment we'll just be going over the motherboard uh, and the features and then when we get the DDR5 memory and the CPU then we can actually fire this thing up. And here is the back of the motherboard box. All kinds of interesting stuff going on there. Uh, the print here is so small I'll just post a little slide. You can look at that and freeze frame it. Study it if you want. Same thing here with the rear I.O. panel. It's awful small. So the basic information here, as far as the features, we've got direct power 18 plus one plus one. This is your uh, VRM power, uh, your phases that go to your CPU, DDR5 support. That's good if you're really interested in the latest in memory. Lightning Gen 5, also really cool here. We've got some screaming fast speeds. Lightning USB 20G, so up to 20 gigabits a second on your USB connection. Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2. Again, if you're wanting to be on the top end of the latest Wi-Fi, then 6E is what you want. Audio Boost 5, Mystic Light, that's the usual uh, RGB stuff for the motherboard uh, with MSI. Easy LED control, premium design. Okay, so your heat pipes here, it looks like uh, seven watts per meter Kelvin. So that's a rate of heat transfer uh, it looks like pulling the heat away from your VRM. That's what it looks like there. M.2 Shield Frozer, Frozer AI Cooling. So it looks like it monitors your CPU and GPU temperatures and then adjusts your fans accordingly. All right, so let me pull the slides up here with this information so you can sort of take a look at it. And here are the specifications. You can pause this to absorb all of the specky goodness if you want. And next is uh, basically the layout of the I.O. panel. Everything is called out and we'll look at it up close and personal on the actual motherboard here in just a little bit. So now we can go ahead and actually open it. So it looks like there's something in here. And the actual motherboard Is right here and you know the first thing I notice this thing is heavy this thing is unusually heavy and that is certainly not a bad thing but it just sort of surprised me so we'll very carefully remove this from the bag and there is the back of the motherboard of course the back is usually not terribly exciting but we will go ahead and flip it over like that so here's a quick glance of the motherboard and I'll get this thing mounted so we can go over it in a little more detail but usually the first thing I do is pop the little cover off here and do a quick check on all of the pins to make sure that from the get-go everything is nice we don't have any damaged or bent pins let me zoom in there and clearly all the pins look to be in pristine condition and it's very important to keep this all covered up until you are ready to put the CPU in so I've got the uh, clamping mechanism locked back down carefully put the cover back over and it will stay there until I get the CPU and looking at all of the goodies inside here and all the accessories now I actually already went through all this just sort of make sure everything was there ahead of time and basically what you have uh, this is a little flash drive this has all of your drivers and utilities on it instead of supplying a disk you can just burn your own there's an ISO on there and uh, you just make your own system disks there's this little guy here this is actually I wasn't sure what it was at first but it's a little brush so we have a fine filament on that end and a coarse on this end and this will help keep the dust and dirt 
out of all the little components on your motherboard. So that's just a little motherboard cleaning tool. We have all the appropriate cables here to connect for your RGB. There's your SATA cables in there too. We've got some stuff here that is sort of uh, set up to go with Corsair's uh, lighting control. You've got a looks like okay so just some advertisements for some other MSI computer components we've got these little stickers here you can put these around your cables and label them so you know what cable goes where some more MSI stuff and then some more stickers battery stickers I guess quick installation guide and these are always good you know no matter how many systems you build it's still good to sort of take a quick glance through these this is your looks like a registration card yep and join the MSI reward program comes with a little flathead and a little Phillips head screwdriver on a little keychain that's nice a cool metallic MSI badge and some little connectors uh, these are actually the M.2 lockers and those hold your M.2 drives in place and that's pretty much everything in the box and there's actually a user manual too and I'll show that in more detail again very important to familiarize yourself with all that and the other thing I have and in this box and again I already opened this and sort of made sure everything was there but this is if I can get it open your uh, Wi-Fi antenna so here's what this looks like so there are a couple pouches there's the base or the foot we got a couple key slots there so you can mount this or hang it on a wall so it doesn't come off and there's your antenna two connections that go to the back of the motherboard and it looks like there's a little relief right there for the wire so my guess is this slides yeah looks like it slides down in there sort of pushes together and there you go there's your Wi-Fi antenna and looking at the IO section of the motherboard here so we'll start down here at the bottom there's this little tiny button this is your flash BIOS button so you want to read your manual uh, on how this works and then follow those instructions when it comes time to update your BIOS this column of USB ports these are all USB 2.0 there's an HDMI port a display port connector there and then all of the red USB which are these four and then this one here so that's five uh, those are all USB 3.2 Gen 2 10 gigabits a second type A so that's all the red ones here now the bottom one here is dedicated uh, or at least it's listed as a flash BIOS so this is where you would connect your uh, flash drive with your latest BIOS on there of course our Ethernet connection and this is a big plus for me I like the 2.5 G and then at the bottom is a USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 2 2, 20 gigabits a second type C so this here is the beast for USB connectivity and then we've got your two connections here for your uh, Wi-Fi antenna we've got an optical out and then the rest of these here are your uh, audio input output so for me the two exciting parts are the 2.5 gig Ethernet connection of course that's nothing terribly new that's been on motherboards now for a little while but it's starting to become more and more mainstream and the other big thing for me is this uh, USB connection down here the 3.2 gen 2x2 2 2, 20 gigabits a second type C that's pretty cool okay so we'll look at the motherboard in a little more detail the first thing that stands out we've got these two 8 pin CPU power connectors now sometimes you can get by with just one so I'll have to see if you actually need both of those connected at the same time or not and the second thing that a lot of people ask is uh, your fan header so let's start 
with the first one, which is right here. This is SysFan uh, 1, and that's right next to the I.O. panel here. So there's SysFan 1, and we go to the bottom. Let's see, there is SysFan 2, SysFan 3, SysFan 4, and 5. And then we come up the side, and we've got a SysFan 6 at the upper right-hand corner right below the QLEDs. And we actually have two more. There is a CPU fan one and a pump fan one up here. So we've got quite a few fan headers that are available. Uh, this is your USB 3.0 connector. Here's your other USB connector. And I tell you what, be careful with that socket. Let me zoom in a little bit. It looks like it can go either way, but actually it only goes in there one way. So be really careful when you plug that in. As for SATA ports, We've got six right there, and the M.2 sockets, they're all covered by these heat sinks. So I'll have to pull all the heat sinks off here so that we can see those. Okay, we're looking at the back of the motherboard, which is usually not very exciting because, well, it's the back of the motherboard. But we actually have a couple of useful pieces of information here that are pointed out by MSI. So the first bit of useful information, you can see the way all of these uh, mounting holes have the white paint around them and they say avoid collision. All these holes here that are used on a full-size ATX form factor installation. So uh, of course this would be flipped over and as you're setting it down into your motherboard tray, what you have to be careful is that the studs that are in that tray are set up in the same configuration. And what that means is I can't have any studs here and here because this is for a micro ATX setup. Uh, micro ATX, of course, is much shorter, so everything here where my hand is uh, would not exist on a micro ATX. But if these studs are present and you try to set this motherboard down on top of them, you can scratch the back of your motherboard and damage some of the traces. So they're basically telling you make sure that your stud configuration or your standoff configuration in your case matches your motherboard form factor. And that's actually very apparent right here. So if we look, it says avoid collision. And if you look very closely, you can actually see the little electrical traces that are very close to the edge of this hole here. So if you set your motherboard down into your case and you're, you're sort of shifting it around, trying to get all the studs to line up, all the holes to line up, uh, you don't want to be sliding those across the traces. You could possibly damage one, which would not be good. So just do some planning ahead and make sure all of the studs uh, match the pattern for the form factor of the motherboard you're using. Okay, a quick glance at the RAM slots here. There are four slots, and again, it supports DDR5 memory up to 128 gigabytes, which usually the sweet spot for most people is somewhere uh, 8 or 16. That covers the basis for uh, most uses. Uh, 128 gigabytes, that's just mind-blowing. I can't imagine the cost for that. You could probably buy a small motorhome for the cost for that much memory. Anyway, uh, it is XMP 3.0. It is non-ECC memory. ECC memory is usually used in uh, servers, typically not on consumer grade motherboards. So uh, let's see, that's it for the memory. Let's move on to the M.2 slots. Now you can see there are three heat sinks and I've already loosened the screws here. So I'll go ahead and lift these off. And they all come off pretty easily. Now the backs of these uh, usually have your uh, your thermal uh, layer there and you peel this off and it sticks to your uh, the back of your solid state drive and that is to facilitate heat transfer from the drive to your uh, aluminum heat sink here. There's like a little thermal pad on the back of all these. So you want to make sure you peel the plastic layer off here uh, if you do use your uh, solid state drives in those positions. So again, we have three of these heat sinks, and like I said, they all have the little thermal pads on the bottom. So we have all of these M.2 slots. So there's one, this is the number one slot right here. This is closest to your CPU. This is number two, number three, number four is back here toward the edge of the board, and number five is right here. Now for anyone who uses uh, the Intel Optane memory, I don't even know if anybody uses that anymore, but these four slots right here, so two, three, four, and five are the only ones that support the Optane memory. Number one here does not. 
Now the speeds here for the slots are not all the same. So your first M.2 slot here, this is number one, closest to your CPU. This would be the primary one that you would use if you put your operating system on, a, uh, on an SSD here, which I think most people would these days. So anyway, this is number one and the speed is PCIe 4.0 by four. Number two slot is also PCIe 4.0 by four. The next slot over, this is number three. It is also PCIe 4.0 by four. And we jump down a little bit here. This is PCIe 3.0 by four back in the corner. So this is the furthest point from your uh, CPU. Number five is actually, it bumps back up to PCIe 4.0. And I highly recommend if you're going to use any of your uh, M.2 slots here, consult with the manual. It does a very good job of showing you how to install it, how to set it up, uh, how to position the standoffs here, how to use these little locking mechanisms to hold the drive in position. All of that is covered very thoroughly in the manual. So definitely check your manual. Even if you've installed them before, still a good idea to go back through the manual. Okay, the next thing to be excited about uh, are your PCIe slots. Again, we have three of them here. So the first two slots are actually supported through the CPU, and these are PCIe 5.0, so they are absolutely screaming fast. The third slot here is supported through the chipset, and it is PCIe 3.0. So I'll go ahead and get the heat sinks back on, make sure you keep the screws secured so they don't fall out. Uh, the other thing to point out, if you look right here, there's a little recess there and a little recess there. Those line up with the little pins uh, at each one of these headers. So that just helps line up and keep your heat sink uh, nice and parallel with everything. So just make sure that little pins pop into those little holes. All right, for all you RGB fans out there, we'll look at a couple of the connections. So. First one here is JRGB1 at the bottom left-hand section of the board. This one is four pins. Output here is 12 volts. The next one over here is the J Rainbow one. This is for your addressable RGB. You do not want to interchange these. This is three pin, this is four pin, 12 volts. This is a five volt output. So the connectors uh, are different. They look the same, but there's actually a pin missing for this one. So pay attention to those. Do not mix them up and do not force them. So these two are at the bottom left-hand corner of the board. Let's uh, spin the board around here. At the opposite diagonal corner, which is the top of the board, we actually have another J Rainbow 2 connector. So this is a second addressable RGB connector. And then as a little added bonus here, we have a special dedicated uh, socket here for Corsair. And what this connector allows you to do, and I'll read straight from the manual, the J Corsair 1 connector allows you to connect the Corsair individually addressable lighting pro RGB LED strips, 5 volt, or Corsair RGB fans with the Corsair fan hub. Once all the items are connected properly, you can control the Corsair RGB LED strips and fans with MSI software. So that's a nice little bonus there if you want to use that sort of uh, RGB control. One thing I should go into a little more detail about here. So you have a couple of options for your CPU. They have CPUs that have uh, onboard graphics and CPUs that do not have onboard graphics. So if it's important to use one of these ports here, your HDMI or your display port, then you need to make sure that you buy a CPU that has the onboard graphics. If not, if you get a CPU that does not have the onboard graphics, then you'll have to use a discrete card and these ports will not be functional. So keep that in mind when you're looking for your CPU. Okay, so that pretty much covers most of the details here for the Z690 Carbon Wi-Fi, part of the MPG series from MSI. Now again, this will be a two-part review. This is part one, and as soon as I get my CPU and my RAM modules there, we'll be able to fire this up and we'll be able to do part two. Pricing right now, this is around $400 for this board. My guess is I'm going to be pretty happy with that value. I'll give you the final verdict on that after we get it powered up and get to have some fun with it. But like I said, stay tuned for part two. This is Chris with Overclockers Club. Thanks for watching.